I was messing around with the computers and I'm trying to move files. I've got an external drive that I've been putting all the camera, like this footage, on the external drive from the laptop. And I can do that on battery power. And then the editing computer is a full-size computer, so it needs regular power. And so that's usually I do that on the generator. Uh, I've just started using that. Uh, I, I hadn't set it up the first couple weeks I was in here. So I had a lot of files that I'm trying to get on there. Well, I realized that the computer is basically full already. Okay. So I was like, all right, so I need to spend some time. And this this is one of those things in my existence that just always bothers me. I sit down like I'm going to do something and I end up spending three hours just moving files because, you know, in the last, in April and May, I shot over one terabyte of footage. Okay. And a lot of it is like this, just blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a lot of crap I don't need to record probably, but later on, I think I'm going to want to see it just you know, to see what it was like when I first got here and, you know, if, if it ever gets to a point where I'm like, just screw it, I'm, I'm done. Uh, you know, then I want to go back and look at the footage and, was it really that bad? Yes, it was that bad. You should never come back, kind of thing. I'm not there yet, but I could see it happening <laughs> sometimes. It's like, oh, okay, so... Anyway, uh, I left the generator running and the computer running and it was transferring files from one hard drive to another. Okay. <sighs> yeah, give that a day, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, water in the keyboard. Awesome. <sighs> okay. I wanted to be able to just drag one week at a time over to the the big computer and edit it like that. When that was done, I'd render out a final file and then decide, do I want to save any of this footage or is it something I could just delete? Because once it's up on YouTube, I'm probably never going to go back and watch all of the raw footage again. Last night before I went to bed, I had put all of the May files into subfolders. So I had um, 1 through 31 and then I broke those down into weeks. Well, I get over on the big computer and I start moving files over. So that was my plan. I started doing that and then I realized that basically all of May, all of the footage I've shot in May since I got out here is lost. It's just gone. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, what in the heck is going on? So I think, okay, do I got a problem with the drive? I'm looking at everything else. Everything else is there. Just May is gone. Oh man, okay, so then I'm kind of bit, you know, kind of bummed, but in the meantime, I thought, well, let me keep moving the other footage. Um, so I had that going, and then I'm looking at it, and okay, things are going well, but what I need to do is going to take over an hour, and I'm like, you know what, I don't want to sit here and wait for that. So I actually went to get water the first trip and left the computer running on the generator while I was gone. Which, I don't know, I mean, worst case scenario, if the generator either just dies, then your computer crashes because it runs out of power, or the generator catches on fire, okay? It's maybe eight or ten feet away from the bus, there's nothing really too flammable on the back half of the bus. I don't know, you probably shouldn't walk away from it, from your generator, but... You know, it's been running pretty good so far, so I figured, well, I'll take a chance. So, anyway, so then I'm looking at my external hard drive problem, and while I was in town the first time, because I knew, already knew I had a problem, um, while I was in town, I whipped out the phone, Googled a couple things, found some instructions for a program, which is similar to a program I've used before, for how to recover hard drives. So I'm like, okay, great. Uh, but I didn't have the laptop with me, and uh, which I should have taken, but it would have been smart. So I'm like, okay, so I, I got the instructions. I get home, check on the big computer. It's still moving files. So I fire up the laptop, look at it, type in the command, 
no, I don't have that file, that program. It's kind of like your phone and you need to load apps. And what's neat about Linux is it's a lot like how your phone works in that there are so many programs out there that people have written for Linux and they're, most of them are free uh, because Linux itself is an open source free program, uh, free operating system. Um, so you just you just have to be on the internet. So you get on the internet and it just goes out on the internet, finds it, uh, gives you the information. Do you want to download this 17 megabyte file? Yes. And then it goes through the automatic install. Boom. You got it. And then you can just go right into using it. You don't even have to reboot usually. Check the laptop. No, it doesn't have it. I think about it. I'm like, well, you know, I got the rest of the afternoon. And I looked out and I saw the storm was coming, but you're like, okay, it's going to rain, whatever. You know, the night before didn't seem too traumatic, so I go ahead and you know jump in the truck, take the laptop, take the phone, because I use the phone gets internet and then it creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot, and then the laptop uses the phone's Wi-Fi. You know, I, you know, most people with a, a smartphone have done that already, but it's it's really handy for for my situation because. I don't have any services out here. I don't have I don't have cell phone service where I live. I don't have power. I don't have internet. I don't have water. I don't have sewer. Um, I got lots of dirt, and now I got lots of water floating around out there. Drive out, and I'm not even going all the way to town, but I have to drive about 10 miles on the gravel road to get around the corner, which is right by the landfill. That's where my phone starts to work. So I, I'm, that's my plan. Well, I'm going out, and it's starting to rain, and I'm like, okay, no big deal. And then it's starting to hail, and then I look up ahead, and the road looks really weird, you know. And I'm like, then I realize the entire road is covered for like a mile with water, you know. Where I was started, it, it hadn't got to that point yet. So I'm like, wow, that's kind of, you know, because I had seen ruts on the road. I'm like, okay, it looks like water sometimes runs on here. And the road is, they dug the road down below the surface of the desert. Okay. And I, I mean, I can kind of see why, because if you go down three or four feet, you get down to a bedrock layer. But everything above that is silt. And apparently, I mean, it doesn't seem like it works like a normal road construction. Normally, you would dig a ditch and the dirt that you take out of the ditch you put on where the road is going to be and then you pack it down and then you put more dirt and more water and you pack it down and more dirt and more water and eventually it becomes a very hard surface and then you can put gravel on top of it or pave it on top of that so this silt doesn't seem to do that it doesn't really pack down so what I think they had to do is they have to dig down to a level where they get to some hard hard soil or, or rock because the road is actually really really hard well it was until it rained um, <laughs> now there's sections of the road that are washed out but for the most part the road is in good shape so I'm going out to get internet to get one file downloaded not even to you know send email or anything like that this time it was just just to get that one file so I got the laptop, I got the phone, I'm taking the truck, I'm going out to get internet. On the way out there, I go through water deep enough that I got water coming over the hood of the truck. And I'm driving a 4x4 truck. And I'm on the road. This is not going off through some excursion. I'm on the road. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're kind of like, what? What do you mean? This is... I'm in the frickin' desert. It's not, you know, I could see if I was in the Amazon, you know, in the rainforest, you know, in Cambodia or something like that. This is what you would expect in, you know, in um, like Vietnam or something like that. It's like in, in the jungle. I'm in the frickin' desert. And uh, so I'm like, okay, yeah. And the lady at the um, the county office at the courthouse when I first got here um, I had to register my land to get a 911 address 
once you have your 911 address then you can get other things like you, know, you can't set up a water account you can't get a post office box and a couple other things until you had your official physical address you know if you you know if you lived in town you would buy property and it has an address for you this is undeveloped um, land out here so there is no 911 address for each property until you go in and get it so uh, that's kind of a new experience for me Anyway, so the lady in the in the courthouse had said something about well, once I showed her where where my land was and I had to bring my paperwork to show the the, the actual land description, you know, range number and and so on, plot number, and that's all already registered. So she crosses that information, finds it on a map. Okay, where are you going to put your your house or whatever? So I just pointed, and so that's where it's going to be. And so they sent that in. And then she looks up for flood information because they have, um, they know where the flood plains are, and so they want to make sure you're not going to build in the middle of, you know, a low area. And uh, apparently, where I am is not a flood plain. Now I'm really wondering what they consider a flood a flood plain. You know, it's like how many feet underwater do you have to be before you're a flood plain? Maybe the water stays there longer or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm driving out there. I'm going through water. I do finally get out. Uh, there was a couple of spots where I was nervous. You know, I never thought I'm I'm afraid for my life. You know, it's not like you're going through a river. I mean, it, worst case, you know, you'd get the truck stuck in the middle of the road or you kill the engine because you sucked up so much water. I never felt like I was going to die. You know, it's like. Even, I mean, if it's fast moving water, four feet of water would be enough to kill you, probably. But I was never very far from anything that I could grab onto, so it would be really annoying, but I didn't feel like I was afraid. Okay. Um, anyway, so I get out, um, get up on the, on the asphalt, get to the landfill, get, uh, get the internet thing done I needed to do. Then I thought about it and um, it had not been raining for the time I was parked out there. So I thought, okay, the longer I wait, the better it'll be. You know, let the water run away. If, there, if, if there's no new rain, it should get better. Well, what I hadn't really factored in was how much water was on the land and it it's all coming down. And so every time it hits a focus point, so you'd have like a little valley, it all runs down into the middle, and then that runs down to the next valley, and so there's a lot of water all coming to the same place. And I'm in a valley, and the road kind of runs along the valley. And as it turns out, all of that water runs down the road. And I'm like, seriously, why would they do that? You know, they could have put the road on one high high side of the valley. I guess it kind of, it's not in the lowest point. Uh, the lowest point is further down. Um, if I go, you know, like, facing southwest from the bus, if I face southwest, quarter of a mile or so is the county road. If I keep going that direction, another half a mile that seems to be the lowest point of the valley that then goes out so we're not at the low low point on the road even but the way they built the road with the berms on both sides and the road is below the level of the ground so you got you know ground berm road down here below it's you know I got video um, on the cell phone which I'm gonna try to get it up on YouTube it's like, why would they do that? You know, it's just, ah. Anyway, so coming back, um, I got to a few spots that I stopped and I looked and I'm like, I'm going to just sit here and wait. You know, I drove through some pretty gnarly water and then I got to one that I felt like it was getting really deep. And I, it was the first time I really had concern that this is not going well and it seems like it's getting deeper and deeper. And uh, and I could feel it plowing off the front of the truck. So I'm like, okay, stop, get it in reverse. And you're underwater. I mean, you can't see the frickin' road. You don't know, you know, there's probably ditches on some, some parts of the road have a ditch and some parts don't. Like the road is the ditch, it seems like. 
So I backed up for, I bet a couple hundred yards, um, at least, and uh, I was just backing up looking in the mirrors and then looking forward, and as long as I was in line with the road and looking in the mirrors, I could see the edges. I'm like, okay, that's close enough. And then finally I'm like, okay, it's easier if I turn around and or turn my head around and look out the back window where I'm going, which is probably what you're supposed to do. And that's when I realized I had water in the truck bed. You know, I'm like, that's freaking a lot. Of, that's that's high. You know, so it was probably coming off the bumper and rolling into into the back. But I had several inches of water in the truck bed. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm pretty deep. You know, I probably don't want to be there. Okay, so there's water in the truck bed. I'm backing up, going out the road, and I can feel it getting a little bit better, a little bit better. So you're, you're slowly climbing out of it. Okay. Get back, and I look back, and there's a nice high point. And what they have done, the road goes along, and then they make a big, I mean, like, it's not a speed bump. It's like a big berm. I mean, you catch air if you hit these things too fast. I mean, you, and you bottom out on the other side, so you, you should slow down when you get to these. I mean, these are five feet high or so, you know, it's a good hump. And they just go up and they're right back down again. So what the, what those are for, I always wondered about that until now. That's, so you got the road going along and then they'll take uh, probably their cat or whatever they made the road with and they'll make a cut going off into the, de into the desert. And that's to pull the water away from the road. And then so that berm or that, that hump is to stop the water from keeping running down the road so it'll pull it off and then it'll go for a little bit then there'll be another hump and then it'll go off and you know probably over the years they've watched the road to see where it washes out and then they'll go make another cut okay so I, I saw that was behind me so I backed up and got up on top of it so I'm like okay now I'm on high ground I can relax a little bit and then I look over and I had water on the floor of the truck on the passenger side. It didn't come in on the driver's side. I'm not sure why. I might have been just crooked enough because I was trying to get onto the edge where I thought it was higher. And uh, yeah, the seat is wet. I just realized it. Roof definitely leaks. Well, probably through the vents that I made. Anyway, so. Um, I look over and I got two inches of water on the floor of the of the passenger side of my truck and it's got carpeting over there so you're like crap you know it's a four by four truck but it's also the fancy one it's you know it's the one that you probably don't want to take out four wheeling kind of thing yeah anyway uh, so I'm like okay unlock the door go over there open the door and water just runs out I'm like great that's one more thing to think about now so let that run out close the door have a good laugh at this point it's, it's somewhere between funny and kind of annoying but i'm still having a good time i guess so i figure it's just you know shut the truck off we'll sit there for a while and let the water go down because it hasn't rained so eventually the water is going to go down because it's running to somewhere right so i'm like okay no big i'll just i'll just kick back and wait you know i got nothing but time so I probably waited 15 minutes, half an hour, and I could see things starting to pop up on the road that you couldn't see before. So there's a rock that you couldn't see before and that kind of thing. And so I'm like, all right, fine. So I drive ahead for a quarter of a mile, and then I got to the edge of the water, and I stopped, and I just looked for a while. And I realized, and this is what's funny, is there is like a trail or a road beside the road up on the berm. And uh, and there's a, a little bit of a ditch and where the water was supposed to be. And I'm like, okay, so if I can jump across the ditch, which wasn't very far, then I can just walk along the side of the road between the bushes. And then I can see what the road looks like further up. And uh, so I do that for a while. And I step in a really soft piece of silt. And one shoe just about, you know, I mean, I completely over the top of my shoe, it's just filthy, but the other shoe was clean, so I'm like, that's just funny. So I'm careful, I'm walking along, and I'm kind of scouting it out, and I'm like, okay, so I come back, and I took my finger, and I drew a line at the edge of the water, and 
within like five minutes you could see the water had gone down a couple inches so i'm like okay that's a good sign you know it's it's, it's not raining the water's going somewhere eventually you run out of water that's going to come down so i'm like okay so i'll just wait for a little bit longer and you could slowly hear the water getting quieter because it was running really fast and then it kind of dies down you don't get the roar anymore so i'm like okay that's a good sign so wait for a while and it's getting a little bit better and a little bit better and I knew I had driven through that going out but that's I, I was ahead of the most of the water and you know, so I had to keep that in mind is there's going to be more water than there was when I came out so I, I drive through and it's kind of scary but I get through one spot and, I, and then I get to a high point and I wait and I did that and this is like it took me an hour and a half or so to get all the way back to my road and there was some spots that were really scary I mean it was getting I mean I had a couple of spots there had to be at least a quarter of a mile where you're driving along and you can tell the bumper is pushing water all right it's not just a little puddle it's just like and it's held in by the berms the water is coming through the berms and then it goes down the road to the next cut and then it goes out and then you realize that the water is coming both ways down the road you know and so then you're you're going down into a low point and then you can kind of see it going out the other side so you're like kind of gingerly driving along and hoping you don't drop in a hole in which I had a few holes because um, the water would be washing sideways and it just washes the road out you know so you're like okay is that an inch deep or six inches deep or is it a foot you know because if you drop in a foot you're gonna get stuck you know and then you're gonna be in the middle of the road and you know blocking the road and you know that's probably not good for your truck either to be parking it in a stream like that anyway so get um get to the, you know it's like eventually i finally get to you know the last mile and i'm like okay and then you kind of come up a hill and you're like oh good you're out of it no you come right down the other side and here's just a freaking lake and from up above you can look across the land and there's freaking water everywhere I mean it's it just you can see the bushes but everywhere that there's supposed to be dirt it's water oh man oh you know it's just like it's overwhelming you know so you know I'm like okay you go through it and then like you, you feel yourself bouncing along because now the water has washed away all the soft soil and you know it's just the road is just trashed Plus, it's washed boulders onto the road that used to be on the berm, you know, so they're all over the road. Um, finally, I get over the last cattle guard, which is it's actually on the edge of my property. So I'm like, okay, it's just a little bit more, and then I turn the corner, and then I'll be on my property. And for some reason, I thought I was going to go up over the berm, and it's just going to be magically fine. It's it's not fine. It's not fine. It's very not fine. So I I get onto my road and then I realize that my road, which the grader guy just graded for me um, last week, week before now, it was just smooth and beautiful, right? No, it's it's not anymore. It's just trashed, and it's got water running down it. And all across my property, there is just. I mean, it's not like a stream. It's like every four feet, there's another stream, and then another stream, and another stream, and another stream. It's just six inches deep. I mean, literally. Of my 80 acres, I probably had 60 acres that were under six inches of water, and it's all running. It's it's just mind-boggling. Unfortunately, by that time, my cell phone um, was full. Uh, the memory card filled up. Cause I'd shot so much video on the road because it just was like who's gonna believe this it's just you know this is the road that I drive down every day and now there's freaking white water going down the road so you know then I get turned onto my property I got white water running across my property down the road it's just a stream and it's also going crossways and I'm like, okay, just you know, stay in the middle of it, and it's not that deep. It'll be okay. And I get up there, and of course, I've got a gate where the fence is. I have to get out and open the gate, and that's like, you know, over the top of my shoes. 
and I'm like, well, there's not a lot of choice. You got to get out to open it. So I go ahead and open it, and I think about it. I'm like, I am not closing that freaking gate. And that water's cold. I'm just going to leave it open. So the gate's open. I don't know. I'm going to ask. I should ask. I guess the people I bought the land from is, do I need the gate? I mean, I have never seen any cattle out here. You know, I don't you know. You know, if it's not my road exclusively. Uh, if anybody buys the next lot or the lot up here by me, they're also going to drive on the same road. So I don't know if anybody's ever bought the other lot. Uh, I have seen other tracks on the road before. And the land development company paid a guy with the grader to smooth out the road. I, I'm sure that was to help sell the road or to sell the property, not just for my benefit. Anyway, so I get through the gate. I get up to my first corner, so I got like, I I come straight off the, like perpendicular to the county road, then I do a 90 to the left, drive about 100 feet, and then it's about a 45 degree to the right, and then that road runs basically straight north to where my driveway is. Um, I get to the first 90 to the left, and I get stuck in the middle of the road. That area is always soft with silt. Um, when I'm on the motorcycle, I hit that really slow because it's really soft. And so I just hit that and sunk. And I, as soon as I hit it, I'm like, yep, that's it. So I backed up a couple of times and you're just, I mean, when I got out, I was up to the wheel hubs in water and I couldn't see how deep I was in the mud, but it was, you know, I moved about a foot and that was it. So, so that's where I left the truck, uh, about a half a mile from where the bus is. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I mean, I locked it. You know, it'll be there in the morning. Um, hopefully it doesn't rain tonight anymore. I'm hoping it dries out. Uh, the wind is blowing. If the water stops running and the wind blows, that ground should dry out pretty quickly. Uh, it shouldn't take me too long with the shovel, and maybe I'll take, well, I've got the jack down there. I'll take a couple of boards, and I should be able to get out, no problem. Um, I don't have a winch on the truck yet. That might be something to think about, though. Yeah, so, um, then I'm like, okay, I had my laptop in my hand and my cell phone, and I'm ready to walk home, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to be up, I mean, it's not like up to my knees, but it was, it was above my shoes and there were some spots it was probably halfway up to my knees just looking at all the water on the floor still yeah anyway um so i'm like okay so i'm going to be walking through all this water and the water is running it's not just a puddle it's running and i already got my truck stuck in it so that means it's going to be mucky or slippery or something so i'm like yeah I probably don't need my laptop that bad that I'm going to risk carrying it because I didn't have a case to carry it and I just grabbed it with my hands. So and I'm like, yeah, I think that's a good idea not to, okay, just to fly. I'm kind of keeping an eye to see if I ever get ants in here. So far not, which I'm happy about. Anyway, so I decide, okay, I'm going to walk home. So, and I'm like, I'm looking at the land and I'm like, it's just, stream after stream after stream I can't just walk across the ground you know the best option I think is to walk up the road and there's water running down the road oh and the sun is setting it's about to get dark okay and I'm thinking I don't have a flashlight with me I do not want to walk across the property in the dark with water running across it because I mean you're going to slip and fall you're going to get stuck you're going to you know, I know there's a, there are snakes out here, and I just talked to somebody on the road while I was coming in. They they stopped and turned around, and uh, just you know they you know I told them I was new out here, been out here a month, blah blah blah. And I said something about yeah, I saw my first snake, and they're like, oh, kind of was it? I'm like, I don't remember what it was called, but I told them, and they're like, yeah, it's probably not poisonous. I'm like, that's good because it was right outside my door, and. Uh, then they said, you know, there is rattlesnakes out here. I'm like, oh great, you know, that's that's good to know. 
you know, I, I had convinced myself there wasn't, but they said, yeah, they, they've had snakes bite their cattle. So I'm like, okay, good to know. So now I'm like, okay, the last thing you want to see when you're walking through running water is have a snake go floating past you or something like that. So you kind of watch for that. But now I'm walking up the road and uh, there's some spots that are pretty deep and it's running really fast. And I can tell under my feet the road is just crap. <laughs> it's it's going to be a mess tomorrow. You know, in addition to the ruts that I made, it's, it's just going to be a mess. So I eventually get up to my property uh, area, like closer to here. The farther up the hill I got, the better it got. So by the time I got almost up to where I, my driveway comes off, uh, there was some water, but it wasn't running as bad. So I'm like, okay, that's good. So I, and then I get to my actual driveway and I've got water running down the driveway. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's no way around it, you know. And so I, I, f I figured out, and I, I learned this last time I was out there walking around, in the middle of the driveway where I haven't drove, where the tire treads haven't hit, it's still up a little bit higher and it's firmer. The more I drive over it, the more the silt breaks down and it just goes all dusty. So I tried to walk down the middle. It wasn't so bad then. Um, and then I come around the last corner and my actual, the site where the bus is, there's almost no water here. I'm like, oh, that's great. So it's less water runs through here than was running everywhere else. So I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with myself when I see that. Um, so then, you know, then I got in, first thing I do is, you know, drop my, um, wallet and stuff on the bed, grab my camera, walk out, because it's getting dark, so I walk out, shoot some video, so I can kind of see the basic, where the water has ran, uh, because that'll be handy later, because I can start thinking flood control, uh, cut some more drainage ditches that pull the water away from me, and also think about, okay, if I build, how high do I need to build, you know, and then you know, if I go up two feet on concrete and then put a ditch around it to pull the water away, you know, is that even going to be enough? I don't know. It's a lot of water to deal with, though. And I don't know if this was the worst of it, you know. Uh, the one thing I saw, well, a couple of things. I have a water line that's probably three three inches off the ground on the bus tires. Okay, so I had that much water running across here. And this area is better than what I saw, like, further south on my property. Because south is running downhill. So I had at least three inches on the ground here. Um, there was an oil drip pan uh, that I used for changing oil. Um... I wiped it out, I think, at one time because it was fairly clean. So I just, I'd, I'd thrown a rock in it so it wouldn't blow away and I set it out in the middle thinking, well, maybe I'll catch a little bit of water. I can see how much I got. After last night, I only had half an inch of water in there, but it was kind of close to the bus. So I think maybe it was sheltered because there was a lot of water on the ground last night. Well, tonight when I got home, the drip pan was on the edge of the bush line so it had floated probably 20 or 30 feet with the rock in it and it was right full of water okay so that's got to be about four inches I think I'm gonna measure it tomorrow so I got three or four inches of rain in probably an hour or so rain and hail um, then I noticed that the generator had a water line on it so I'm thinking it got wet and uh, quit running. So you know now I'm wondering, okay, did it run out of gas? Which I don't think so, uh, because I dumped in a couple gallons before I left. You know, so at some point it quit running, and the computer was left on, and so that, you know, whatever. Um, hopefully it starts up again and I didn't screw up the rest of my video files. That's going to be really annoying. Um, but then 
you know, so it's like the generator definitely got wet. And, you know, thinking back is I put a rain shelter on the top of the generator, but it never occurred to me that the generator sitting on the ground was going to be a problem. You know, I didn't see anything around here that made me think, well, I've seen wash patterns on the ground, you know, where water has ran, but I didn't think there's going to be six inches of water running through here. It just didn't, that never crossed my mind at all. You know, it's, you know, it's like they say, you don't know what you don't know until it happens. And, you know, how can you, this is the freaking desert, you know. There's nothing that I saw that made me think, even though, you know, we talked about a floodplain, that's, it was several miles from here, you know, or, or whatever. It wasn't anywhere near where I am. And I can see that the ground slopes, and so I just, you know, it would run away from me. And obviously I'm not at the high point because there's a ridge line, you know, a couple hundred feet high. But I'm also not at the low point because the low point is in the middle of the valley, you know. So water will run past me somewhere, but it I never felt like, yeah, I'm about to get flooded out here. You know, the fact that I had at least three to four inches of water outside my door here, I mean, <laughs> how, how do you get your head around that? You know. Anyway, so now the thing is, first thing in the morning or sometime tomorrow, I have to go get my truck and see if I can get it unstuck and get it up to here. Hope it doesn't rain it again tomorrow. This is supposedly, you know, when they do get rain, I guess. Um, the people I talked to on the road were really excited to have the rain because they haven't had rain for, you know, eight months. And, you know, I was like, okay, so this, this does happen. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's supposed to rain. And I'm like, it's the desert. It's not supposed to rain. But it does rain. So, anyways, um, so now i got to reevaluate, you know, what am I going to do? If I got that kind of rain and I need to get to work, right? I mean, shit. I'm definitely going to have to talk to my managers and say this is the situation. I had no idea I was going to see this kind of flooding. Um, you know, when I'm coming home, if I see it's raining like that, I'm going to park out on the road, up on the asphalt, and just wait. Come in in the daylight. I do have a sleeping bag in the back of the truck, so or in the behind the seat, so I'll be okay. Uh, but if I'm if I'm on the motorcycle, I mean, the night before I I rode home and it rained on me a little bit. I thought that was funny, you know. And then it stopped before I even got out here, so I, you know, there was no water on the gravel road. But what if I would have had that kind of rain at three o'clock in the morning when I'm coming home on the motorcycle? I mean, what would you do? You're, I mean. My riding gear is more or less waterproof. You know, I've ridden in snowstorms with that stuff, so. Um, you know, the temptation would be to try to get home instead of sitting out there in the rain for four hours waiting for it to stop, you know, but. Um, if I had water coming over the hood of the truck, I mean, it, it was like a wave. It wasn't like I was underwater. But, you know, you push water and it rolls over the top. I don't think I could ride the motorcycle through that. You know, because your water level, I think on the bike, would probably start sucking water at two feet. So, and you can't see two feet of water when you're in it. Wow. What do you do with that, you know? And I live on the wrong side of that. The one good thing that I can say out of all of it right now is I'm really glad that I experienced it in the daylight on my day off, you know? If I would have just said, okay, I'll just stay in the bus and not go out there, I would have been in here looking at all that water running by but I would have had no idea what the road looked like, you know. So 
in that respect, that was a, you know, a brilliant stroke of luck, I guess is the best thing that I did, that I did go out and see it. Uh, I just saw lightning again. I hope it doesn't rain anymore tonight. I really miss having internet so I can see what the satellite map would look like. Ah, anyway, so... I have this feeling like I really want to walk out and get the truck now, but... That would be a freaking nightmare in the dark. Just wait till morning and hope for the best. Anyway, I just talked for almost an hour, I think. Not even sure what time it is now. Where's my clock? <laughs> 10 o'clock, straight up. Great. Yep, that seat is definitely wet. It got wet in the rain. Great. It's going to get musty, probably. All in all, not so bad. Anyway, that clip's just about done. I'm going to shut the camera off for now and think about what I can do in the meantime. And be ready for tomorrow. I'll probably go to, uh, I want to go to bed early, but I, I need to stay up a little bit later. So tomorrow wasn't quite so long. That's assuming I can get out of here tomorrow. Tomorrow might be easy. It'll be interesting because I have to get, <laughs> I have to drive down that road for 10 miles before I can even call out to tell them I can't make it to work. And by the time I get to the point I can call, I could go to work. So there's that. You kind of, That's what I'm going to have to tell them tomorrow is I don't have cell phone coverage and I won't be able to call in if I'm stuck. So, how's that for a responsibility? Anyhow, that's the situation now.